Hello guys, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. Let's begin today's class. I hope all of you are aware of the live classes and our mobile application. So let's begin with the first question. The second edition of the UN World Geospatial Information uh, International Congress was organized in Hyderabad, Telangana by the Department of Science and Technology and UN Committee of Experts on Geospatial Information Management. The first edition of this Congress was held in 2018 in China when was the Committee of Experts on Geospatial Information Management formed. So here the right answer is 2011. Now you must have got the glimpse of the news. The news is about the Congress. The second edition of this Congress was held in Hyderabad, Telangana and it was organized by Department of Science and Technology and the UN Committee of Experts on Geospatial Information Management. The theme of this Summit is geo enabling the global village, no one should be left behind. Okay, now the UN Economics and Social Council has created the Committee of Experts on, geo on Global Geospatial Information Management in 2011. The committee operates under the UN Department of Economics and Social Affairs. Now, what is this geospatial information management and why this committee was created? So, guys, geospatial is basically the information related to a space particularly okay let me give you an example of geospatial technology or geospatial data that we use have you ever used google maps google map is basically a gps global positioning system and it is the very apt example of geospatial technology which we all are using to extract the data about the particular locations okay so if we extract the data of a particular location that uh, data is known as the geospatial information and the technology through which we are extracting that data the technology would be called as the geospatial technology now with this example you must have understood the implication of uh, you can say progressing in this field if we have many geospatial technologies hongi, especially the advanced ones then we will be able to access the remotest areas or this is our defense capabilities agriculture uh, uh, innovations and various kinds of innovations can be enhanced. So that is why the Geo uh, Information Congress was organized in order to discuss the new innovations and the challenges that are there uh, in this sphere. The first edition of this was organized in China. You all have already heard it. Question number two is the 15 feet uh, high statue of Jay Prakash Narayan, uh, who was uh, the late socialist icon, the party leader, or you can say the party member of Janta Party. So, where is his statue established? So, his statue has been established in Bihar at his birthplace. Okay, so in Saran district in Bihar, his 15 feet tall statue has been inaugurated by Union Home Minister Amit Shah. Okay, so that makes it all the more important. Now we are talking about Jay Prakash Narayan. So let's have a look at his biography, The Dream of Revolution by Bimal Prasad and Sujata Prasad. Okay. The biography has not been released in this year, but we are talking about Jay Prakash Narayan. Therefore, it is important for you to know his biography as well. Okay, the name and their authors. We are talking about politics, so why not talk about the recent breakthrough that happened in Maharashtra? in the political sphere okay so Eknath Shinde who is the current CM of Maharashtra he has created his separate party out of Shiv Sena and that separate party is named as Balanchi Sahib uh, sorry Bala Sahib Banchi Shiv Sena okay so this is the name of this new party now there is the new poll symbol which has been allotted by election commission to this party and that symbol is two swords and a shield and clearly a question can be framed out of it that the two swords and a shield is the symbol of which political party in India. Okay, so then in that case you should be aware of the party that is Bala, Bala Sahib Anchi Shiv Se. The third question is which state has launched the football for all initiative to promote football in partnership with FIFA among school children. So here Odisha is the right answer. So, he is the CM of Odisha, Naveen Patnaik. So, Odisha government is very much enthusiastic when it comes to hockey and other kinds of sport. Okay. 
So here, Odisha government has launched this football for all initiative along with FIFA. And under this initiative, basically the footballs will be distributed among school children so that they play with it, they get interested in the sport, and then the sport can be spread across the state. Okay. FIFA is going to sponsor the activities undertaken and uh, in the under this initiative, Football for All, along with two other partners. So we have Culling Institute of Industrial Technology and Culling Institute of Social Sciences. Both of these organizations are going to help FIFA in sponsoring the Football for All initiative. Okay, so there are three sponsors: FIFA and these two Culling Institutes. Okay, question number four is by which year will the dragonfly rotor graft land on Titan? So it is 2034. Okay, now there must be questions in your head. What is dragonfly rotor craft and what is Titan? So let's answer them. Recently, NASA has announced to launch its dragonfly rotor craft. Now, what is rotor craft? It is basically like a helicopter. Okay. Now, this helicopter is uh, you can say capable of functioning like a drone as well. It can surveil the area it can undertake the research work okay research work in the sense that it can collect samples which can be used for research on earth so this is the rotor craft okay and it will land on the surface of titan which is the largest moon of saturn now guys there is a specific place which researchers or scientists you can say have specified for the landing at that space is selk crater Okay, so there is a particular space on Titan, Selk Crater, and remember the name of this place. It can also be asked if the examiner is in a mood to dig the grave of the students, then definitely he will he can ask this question: on which planet or on which planet's moon is the Selk uh, Crater region located? Okay, so if this question is there, then you should be able to answer it. It is Titan, which is the largest moon of Saturn. Okay. Now, one more speciality of uh, this rotor craft is there, and that speciality is that it is going to be the first flying machine to be launched by humans in the outer solar system. Okay. Now, what is outer solar system? Solar system, so we all have heard. What is outer solar system? So, guys, everything that is beyond this line, that is beyond Mars, is the outer solar system. Okay. So, till Mars, in us. Out, uh, after Mars, we have Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune coming in the outer solar system. So it is being launched on the Saturn's moon. So it is going to research on the composition of Titan. Okay. Fifth question is: What is the name of the nuclear exercise to be organized by the North Atlantic Treaty Organization (NATO), the very famous NATO? So here steadfast noon is the name of this nuclear exercise. I hope you are understanding the gravity of this situation. On the one hand, Russia is threatening the world with nuclear power, nuclear weapons. And on the other hand, NATO has announced to organize this nuclear exercise. So it can be termed or you can say it can be looked upon as a direct challenge to Russia. Or if you want to look from the other part, other side, then you can also understand it. Uh, as a pressure pressurizing technique which the west is trying to uh, do on putin okay to trick putin because if the nato is conducting this exercise it is a signal to russia as well that they are ready to counter russia they will not let russia do anything out of its whip okay so that's a very kind, uh, tricky kind of situation in the international arena right now we cannot uh, comment on this okay so let's discuss the news which is of relevance for us. So, first of all, NATO has announced it planning to organize the steadfast noon nuclear exercise. Now, I have to say that you have to say that this exercise is organized in the planning. NATO had already plans to organize the steadfast noon before February as well. Pele se hi NATO plan kar raha tha, but after the invasion of uh, Ukraine, now this exercise is again in the news and NATO has just, uh, you can say, announced its whim to organize this uh, exercise. If this plan is not it can also backfire on the West and on the entire world because if Russia or Putin goes out of hand or something happens, then what do you know, nuclear weapon 
यूज कर ले यूक्रेन पे बिकॉज राइट नाउ द बॉम्बार्डमेंट ऑन यूक्रेन द मिसाइल्स ऑन यूक्रेन आर रेनिंग लाइक कैट्स एंड डॉग्स ओके सो दैट्स अ वेरी प्रिकेरियस सिचुएशन एंड वी कैन नॉट प्रोटेक्ट वट इज गोइंग टू हैपन इन द फ्यूचर ऑफ कोर्स बट लेट प्रे फॉर द बेस्ट फॉर द ह्यूमैनिटी एंड पीस ओके बिकॉज न्यूक्लियर वॉर इज द अल्टीमेट सेल्फ डिस्ट्रक्टिव मूव ओके सो कमिंग बैक टू द न्यूज इट सेल्फ the nato members have however announced that they are not going to test the bombs live nuclear live testing nahi hogi they are just going to test the nuclear carrying vehicles okay the helicopters the uh, you can say the tanks or whatever the missiles whatever it is they are just going to test whether these vehicles are capable of transferring one material from other uh, from one side to other side okay interoperability of that will be checked okay now guys 14 out of the 30 members of nato will participate in this exercise okay now out of these 30 members how many countries have actually have the nuclear power so there are only 3 countries out of the entire nato which have the nuclear power us uk and france okay so the nuclear carrying vehicles and everything will be the responsibility of these 3 countries only now on that note let me inform you there are nine countries in the world which have the nuclear warhead capability us russia uk france india pakistan china israel and north korea okay uh, so these are the nine countries which have the nuclear weapon capabilities do remember this point okay now guys there are only 30 members in nato you must have heard about finland and sweden also appealing or you can say applying for the membership of nato and i have myself taught you this thing that many countries have ratified they have agreed to uh, include finland and sweden and nato has itself signed the accession agreement also but what has happened now turkey and hungary are blocking the membership of finland and sweden into the nato and why are they doing that that is the international relations that is the politics okay and we are not going to go into that just remember that right now finland and sweden have not been included into nato they have however applied for it and you would not believe it 28 out of 30 members have agreed to let finland and sweden into nato just hungary and turkey are objecting to it so we are discussing about nato the nato was established on april 4 1949 and these are the european countries which are members of nato and these two are seeking the membership uh, of this okay and on the global level after including russia sorry us and uh, canada we have this map of nato countries Sixth question is which bank has unveiled its next generation contact center service to provide enhanced services and a good experience to customers. So it is guys State Bank of India. Okay. So very simple news it is a contact center has been established for providing the services to the customers. Which bank has signed an MOU with Vyana Network for digitizing the supply chain financing and increasing its reach in India? So here, guys, IDBI Bank is the right answer. So IDBI Bank and Vyana Network, both of them have uh, signed this MOU to digitize the supply chain financing and increasing its reach across India. So first of all, look at IDBI's shareholding composition because recently. LIC and the central government both of them have announced to sell 60% of their stake in IDBI to the private players okay to whoever uh, is willing to buy that so you need to remember the shareholdings of all the organization okay so LIC holds 49.2% government owns 45.5% and other private players hold 5.3% approximately shares of this bank okay now what is supply chain financing so let's read it first supply chain financing is a form of financial instrument or transaction wherein a third party like a bank or a lending institution provides immediate liquidity to the supplier on behalf of the customer on the basis of the invoice okay now you would better understand it with this picture now this pr revenue itself is a lending institution engaged in the business of supply chain financing okay so what is it basically 
you would know this fact that businesses run on credit majority of the businesses run on credit there is a credit cycle after which the buyers pay to their suppliers and what will happen if the suppliers need the money immediately so in order to remove this hurdle of immediate liquidity this problem which is faced by the suppliers this instrument has come into play and this is not a very new instrument supply chain financing was there in india and it has been practicing uh, in practice for so long in india so in this uh, supply chain financing business what happens is suppose this buyer has bought goods from suppliers and it has given the bill approved bill to the supplier now this supplier will, su will submit that bill to this funder and this funder will provide the amount equivalent to the bill to this supplier and when the due date comes this buyer would pay back to the funder okay that's the basic idea so in this manner the money is flowing from one organization to another organization that is happening but it is at the same time fulfilling the working capital needs of the supplier so that their business is also not hampered okay i hope this much is clear and if there is a question in your mind that what uh, would this funder get in return then let me answer the funder gets a fee in return of this service okay so the buyer pays the fees to the funder so that the liquidity urgent liquidity can be provided to the supplier so that is the basic idea of supply chain financing which company has developed india's first petrol operated drone named dh aggregator okay so here daksh is the right answer so guys this is the uh, dh aggregator now daksh unmanned systems private limited which is a student startup based in chennai so it has developed india's first petrol operated drone named dh aggregator now it is operated on petrol therefore it can last for a longer period of time it is not a battery operated drone right so it does not need immediate charging or frequent charging it can run for a longer period of time and that's the benefit of this dh aggregator drone and it will be used for uh, spreading pesticide or whatever is the uh, fertilizer or whatever is the need of the agriculture uh, it can fulfill that okay so this daksh startup is based in chennai and there it is also planning to establish its manufacturing unit as well now madras institute of technology has also has provided the technological support the research and development support to the daksh startup and anna university in tamil nadu is providing the pilot drone pilot training to the students who clear class 10 okay so that is another initiative that was related to the state of tamil nadu that is why it is here question number 9 is mahendra singh dhoni has launched an indigenous camera drone named droni during the global drone expo in chennai tamil nadu which company has manufactured the drone so here guys garud aerospace is the right answer mahendra singh dhoni has launched this camera drone which is named as droni so it is used for surveillance purposes and why has dhoni launched this drone because dhoni is the brand ambassador of garud aerospace that is why dhoni has launched it otherwise dhoni has nothing to do with it he is just the brand ambassador of garud aerospace so this is guys surveillance drone and you can clearly see the difference in the body of the drones i have shown you the dh aggregator which is going to spread the uh, pesticides and insecticides on the farm and here this is the camera uh, drone which is used for the surveillance purpose okay so i have already explained enough now apart from this garud aerospace has also developed the kisan drone okay there is one more drone that is kisan drone and it is used again for spreading pesticide and other kinds of materials on the farm land the last question but not the least because it is very important so which organization has released the crypto asset reporting framework so out of these options oecd is the right answer organization for economic cooperation and development how many countries are members of this organization this is your task to tell me now guys what is this crypto asset reporting framework from the very name itself what can you uh, grasp it is basically a framework which tells the standards of reporting 
to the crypto agencies all the agencies which are involved in the crypto exchanges or crypto related activities okay so here let's read the statement so that i can explain it statement by statement for your a better understanding okay so it cd framework provides for reporting and exchange of information on crypto asset that is very evident from the name itself OECD crypto rules will be presented to the G20 finance minister and central bank governors meeting on October 12 to 13 which is being held in New York okay alongside the international monetary fund and world banks annual meeting okay so both the meetings are being held and india's nirmala sitaraman is attending those meetings okay so the next point is risk of tax evasion if uh, if assets and transactions not covered by G20 reporting standards now what is the need of this framework this statement is telling you that because if there is no uh, you can say formalized reporting of the crypto assets then definitely the money can be laundered through this and tax evasion can also take place so in order to curb that this reporting framework is very very uh, necessary okay tax evasion ho sakta hai money laundering ho sakti hai terror financing ho sakti hai crypto assets ko use karke so there are many risks attached to the crypto assets if they remain unreported the next point is assets can be transferred held without intervention of traditional uh, financial intermediaries stored without administrator having full visibility on transaction holding so what is it telling you so basically this framework has defined three things first is the entities crypto entities entities of uh, who we, do we call the crypto entity second is crypto assets and third is crypto data so what exactly needs to be called as the crypto data that will be reported okay so all these three pillars have been defined by this framework i will discuss that as well but first let's discuss this point in detail so this point is telling you the definition of crypto assets okay those assets which are decentralized which are shared without any financial intermediary the traditional financial intermediary okay because now we have very novel crypto exchanges specifically created for the crypto transactions okay they are not the traditional brokers they are very new in the business so that is why it is mentioned that traditional intermediaries inter uh, the absence of traditional finance intermediaries is also there in the crypto assets okay the next point is crypto market gave rise to crypto asset exchanges wallet providers and most being unregulated so here again what i have just told you the crypto exchanges have come up wallet providers have come up and all of these are very new they are unregulated okay so this bahut zyada badh jata hai agar organizations unregulated rahengi OECD rules will target digital representation relying on cryptographically secured distributed ledger okay so what is cryptographically secured distributed ledger it is basically the uh, transaction ledger that is there okay you can definitely see who you have transferred the money uh, the crypto asset so that is the ledger that is there on the crypto website and that uh, data will be regulated by the governments okay carve outs foreseen for assets that can't be used for payment investment or for assets covered by the crs okay so it is basically telling you that uh, you can use the uh, carve out images or the data basically the data it is explaining the data that needs to be reported to the government so now let's discuss what's the definition of the crypto entity what's the definition of the crypto asset and what is the definition of crypto data so entities refer to the crypto asset firms including crypto exchanges intermediaries like brokers the wallet providers everything uh, every agency which is involved in the crypto transaction that would come under the crypto entity okay so they need to report to the country in which they operate okay what is the crypto asset according to this framework so according to this framework crypto asset is any asset that are held and transferred in a decentralized manner without the involvement of traditional financial intermediaries the second point here is that the crypto assets include the crypto derivatives stable coins the non fungible tokens i hope you are aware of nfts nfts are creative works okay which you cannot exchange suppose i have wrote uh, i have written a poem okay and i just put it on a digital platform on a blockchain platform and then i sell it to the other person 
okay so that other person cannot sell it again because that is my nft okay that non that is the non fungible token non fungible to tokens are those tokens or the currencies or the assets which cannot be exchanged uh, and on the other hand the fungible tokens are the currencies or the assets which can be exchanged for example the fiat currency is a fungible token because we can exchange the currency but in this non fungible token we cannot exchange it okay uh, it is used for the aesthetic purposes like i have already told you the painting the poetry whatever it is if i have uh, uploaded it on the block uh, blockchain platform then i can sell it only i can sell it because i have the right over it the framework does not include the central bank digital currency and the cryptography entities okay central bank digital currency is not covered because that has not come into effect as of now anywhere in the world okay it's just a pilot launches regarding the uh, central bank digital currency that is being done across the world and as far as the cryptography entities are concerned so these entities are not involved in the transaction of crypto they are basically the accountants who keep the ledger of crypto transaction they just take the data which transaction has been transferred to whom okay which crypto and which nft has been transferred to whom so that kind of ledger is maintained by the cryptography ent entities and they are not undertaking any kind of transaction okay therefore they have not been involved into the uh, into the sphere of this framework the last is the crypto data so whatever exchanges that have taken place between the crypto assets and the fiat currency okay for example i have transferred the crypto in your account and you pay me in the cash in my bank account so if you transfer the fiat money in my bank account so that is the exchange of crypto asset with the fiat currency exchanges between one or more types of crypto asset okay for example i have given you bitcoin you have given me other kind of ethereum coin whatever it is so that will also a crypto transaction use of crypto as a currency of exchange so all such data should be reported to the government of the country in which these uh, transactions take place and the crypto entities operate so on that note guys i would like to say a goodbye to all of you i hope you have enjoyed today's data uh, and whatever explanation i have given to all of you thank you so much for watching this video